Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutonFeather.com and we have a special guest tire in this fly tying tutorial. It's Mr. Kevin Compton of Performance Flies. Watch as Kevin ties his double duck caddis. This is just a really great fly, but more importantly, you are gonna see some exceptional techniques used by Kevin in this video. Stick around after the time because I'm gonna ask Kevin some questions about his pattern. You're gonna love this one, so let's go. Before we start tying this fly, Kevin, can you give us a 360 look at it and also tell us about the hook you're using and some of the components? Sure. I'm using a barbless dry fly hook from Hanok, an H130BL. And I typically fish this fly in sizes 14 to 18. Uh, the double duck gets its name because there are two CDC wings on this, an underwing, a bubble wing, and an overwing of a second pair of CDC feathers. And it has a post for visibility and a nice buggy thorax of CDC fibers and red fox squirrel hair. And what about that tag that I see sticking out the end? Every time you turn it upside down, I see that nice fluorescent tag. What can you tell us about that? The tag represents the egg sac uh, and is also a general attractor element of the pattern. All right, very cool. Uh, well, I think everyone has now seen a 360 of this. When you look at this fly, it definitely screams bugginess. It's a fish catching fly, but most importantly with this video, you're gonna see a lot of great techniques from Kevin. So let's get a clean hook in the vise and start tying this one. All right, let's start tying this double duck caddis adult. Kevin, before we start, will you tell us a little bit about the hook you're using? Sure, I'm using a barbless dry fly hook from Hanok, uh, an H130BL. And I typically fish the pattern in 14s to 18s, mm -hmm. but I'm going to tie this today on a 12 so you can more easily see some of the techniques I use. Oh, sounds good. Attach my thread behind the eye of the hook, form my jam knot, and pop off the thread. The first thing I'm going to tie in is the tag. Now the tag is two strands of Glowbrite floss. And I use a lime green number 12 glow bright. Mm -hmm. I like this material because it's truly fluorescent and it also s does not change colors when it's wet. And I use a tag on this caddis pattern to represent uh, an egg sac or just generally an attractor element of the pattern. So instead of tying in two strands at the bend, I'm going to double the floss over my working thread, take that to the hook shank, and tie that in and wrap back to the bend of the hook. Okay, mm -hmm. now I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna cut it about the half the width of the gap of the hook. So I just have a short tag or egg sac at the back end. After the tag, what comes next, Kevin? I'm gonna tie in the underwing here and what I use are two CDC feathers. I'm going to tie them in by the tips, right where I tied off the tag of the, of the fly. Take one soft wrap, another, a second wrap, and pull up, and that'll seat those feathers right on top of the shank. Okay. Okay. Take one more wrap, and then I'm going to take a couple angular wraps, trapping that CDC feather on the front of it. Okay, and that'll really secure that in, and it won't pull free. All right, will you now show us this next technique, Kevin? Sure. I'm gonna pull out a little bit of thread and to form my dubbing loop, I'm gonna insert my middle finger in to form a V uh, with the thread. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take my thread back to the shank, take a couple wraps, then I'm gonna take a wrap around the top of the loop, back over the shank, and one more locking wrap. I'm gonna attach my dubbing twisting twister tool, which I like to use the performance dubbing twister uh, that I designed. And I'll attach that there. Then I'll grab my body material, which is red fox squirrel fur. It's the back hair uh, on a red fox. Okay, and then I'm gonna drape that loop over my finger okay. and spin Okay, and then 
popping the loop like this, I'll knock out all the under fur and it'll leave just the guard hairs. Okay. I'm going to attach my hackle pliers to the loop, cut the tool out, and then I'm going to wrap the body. Before I do that, I need to advance my thread two-thirds of the way up the shank, and then wrap the cool. body. And as you're wrapping, I'll jump in, I'll say a couple things. Number one, um, the tool that you use, the one that, that sold through Performance Flies, I've used that before. I love the design, but what I really love about it is that it's just, it feels like a weight in your hand. And when you spin it, it takes off. And then number two, I have never thought to cut away the tool before and then wrap up with a hackle plier. So thanks for sharing that tip, not just with everybody, but specifically with me, because that's a really great one to kind of hold on and, and kind of utilize with my own tying. So thank you. Okay, so I've wrapped the body up to where my thread's hanging, and now I need to tie the loop off. The way I do that is I take a wrap on the left of the loop, I move it over and take a wrap on the right. Switch hands, wrap on the left, wrap on the right, mm -hmm. and I can cut that loop out. Now to finish the underwing, I'm going to pull the CDC feathers over the body and push them back to form the the bubble, which is the underwing. I'll pull all the feather, those feathers over the top again, and I'm going to push this back to the length, about the length of the tag, mm -hmm. pinch it on both sides of the shank. Then I'm going to take a couple wraps, and on my second wrap up, pull up, which will seat that underwing right on top of the hook. Then I'll pull the butt ends of the CDC back and take two or three wraps and cut out the ends there. Now the overwing is also CDC and I use two two feathers again and so I'm going to take... And before you tie these in, will you actually show that what the feathers look like from the front view? Sure. You got, I know there's lots of information about CDC out there and if you notice the ones that, that Kevin's using, they have the stem right up through the middle but really the key, and he kind of mentioned this before, um, you want to be using, and you said, the wild duck CDC, if they can get their hands on it. Yeah, it's got denser barbules on it, and it's actually the structure of the feather, uh, not so much the preen oils that that uh, give it its unique buoyancy. Okay, and before you, turn, before you tie that in, let me change the camera angle a little bit, and we will uh, zoom back in so they can really get a close-up of everything to finish this fly. All right, we're zoomed back in. What comes next with the CDC? I'm going to tie the overwing, which again is a uh, second pair of CDC feathers, and that's where this pattern gets its name, the double duck, uh, the, the two CDC wings. Okay. I'm going to gather up my, my feathers here, even up the tips, and then I'm going to hold this with the concave side of the feathers facing the near side of the hook so that, and have the tips extend a little bit beyond the underwing. I'm going to pinch that in place, then I'm going to take my thread, counterspin it to take the twist out, take one loose wrap all the way around, a second wrap all the way around, and then as I come back up, I'm going to pull up and seat that wing mm -hmm. right above the underwing. Now I'm going to pull the CDC back here and wrap in front of them two or three times and then I can clip that out. Okay. And whenever you pulled up to seat it, you really were able to bear down that thread. What, what thread are you using, Kevin? I'm using Giorgio Benecki's 12-0, which is about a 70 denier thread. It's got good stretch in it. Uh, allows me to put a little pressure on it. Okay. Now I'm going to tie in the post. The post uh, material is Jack Mikovich's Optic White Poly. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use one half of one strand. And I'm going to tie this in underneath the hook shank. And I'll take a couple wraps right in front of that post, switch hands, tie behind it using my finger to move my thread back up to my hand here. Three wraps behind it. Shorten up my thread, and I'm going to take some wraps around the base to gather up those two strands. 
pull and take one locking wrap over the shank. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to where the where I tied in the overwing, and I'm going to form my thorax, which again uses a, a dubbing loop. Okay. All right. Why don't you take us through and just show us how to finish this pattern? Okay. We're going to form another dubbing loop. Middle finger in the loop, wrap around the shank, wrap around the top of the loop, and another wrap and locking wrap. Then I'm going to take my dubbing twister tool, place that in. I'm going to take a CDC feather. I'm going to use one half of the base of a feather here, and I'm going to place dubbing on top of that half, okay, mm -hmm. so that they're both they're layered like that. And then I'm going to place this loop, or excuse me, the CDC and dubbing into the loop, like so. And I'm going to cut out the stem, and then again hold it over my finger and twist that. Pluck it a little bit, let some of the under fur out, and the CDC. Now you can see there's both dubbing and CDC fibers in there, and I'm going to wrap this through as the thorax, which will represent the legs, help it float a little better. Switch hands, tighten that down, so we'll wrap it down the loop. Back on the other side of the loop. Cut the loop out and whip finish the fly. And then as far as trimming the post, I like to trim it about the width of the gap of the fly. And there you have the CDC Caddis Adult. Jeez, that looked really nice. Can you give us a kind of a 360 in the vise right now? It just looks really nice. I know they saw this uh, previously in the sneak peek, but what a buggy looking fly. Now, if, if any of you are wondering how Kevin got it so buggy, whenever you first saw it, you probably have a better idea now. So let's change the camera angle and I'm gonna kind of quiz Kevin a little bit more about this pattern. So Kevin just finished tying the double duck caddis, the adult version. You made it look really easy, so thank you for that. I hope all of you can really go back and pull out some of those techniques that he showed us because it, they're just very fluid. Whenever I'm watching him tie, I noticed that right away. The one thing that I did want to mention, Kevin was using a dubbing loop tool that he sells through performanceflies.com. Uh, I love the tool. If you haven't seen it before, I know I've featured it in some of my videos in the past. What's nice about it is you designed it, right? Mm -hmm. He designed it and it's a very heavy weight. So whenever you spin it, that thing just really takes off. So that's something to kind of look out for. But now let's talk a little bit more about the fly. How else could people vary it from the one that they saw on your tying? Well, a few different ways. One, and, the, and probably the the most important way is whether to tie a post or not. Okay. Um, you can also tie a post in another color if your eye sees uh, hot orange or chartreuse better than white. Okay. You have that flexibility. There's nothing set in stone. Okay. And then when we go back to the CDC, you really prefer the wild CD versus the CDC that's harvested for the intention of feathers. Correct. I prefer the wild duck CDC because if you take a feather and you look at it, you'll notice that there are many more barbules on the feather. It's a denser feather than most of the domestic raised birds. And it's the structure of the feather, not so much the preen oils that uh, make up its unique buoyancy and why we like to use it with dry flies. Okay, so what I'm, I hear you saying, if any of you are friends with duck hunters, contact them ASAP. So you, can, you want that, that wild duck. Um, let's go back to a question I probably should have asked earlier. How did this fly even came to be? What was your reasoning behind it? Well, I had looked at a lot of different caddis patterns that were tied with CDC. Uh, the underwing of the pattern, which is a bubble, is, is very similar to a CDC loop wing emerger. Okay. There are various patterns tied by Mike Heck of Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, or Renee Harrop out in uh, um, Idaho. But 
I added an overwing to it, um, which makes it a little different, and tried to make the fly buggier and to sit right in the film. Okay. And I'm sure that overwing really gives a nice strong profile from underneath. Sure, and it, it, it allows for a certain translucency of movement in the wind, okay. and so forth. Okay. Now you're talking about on the water. Let's jump into that direction. Uh, how do you like to fish this? What situations can you kind of give people tips about? Right. Well, it's a caddis adult pattern, so it fishes well during caddis hatches. Uh, here in central Pennsylvania, we fish uh, for the granums, which is very similar to the Mother's Day caddis that you see out west. And I'll fish it for that, for, for that hatch. Um, and then for the tan caddis we see off and on throughout the summer months. Okay, really cool. And I heard you mention out west. If you're one of the, we'll say, Western viewers who are watching this, you probably already know about the Solitude Fly Company, and they've already picked up this fly, haven't they? They're producing it, right. Got it. So if you're not a tire, you're just watching this, and you're saying, I need a great caddis pattern, you can also contact them if, if you'd like to purchase some that way. That wraps up the Double Duck Caddis with Mr. Kevin Compton of Performance Flies. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on the show, and I hope to have you on again in the future. If you'd like to contact Kevin, you can email him at info at performanceflies.com. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. Click on Fly Tying Videos and click on Guest Tires, where this video will be housed and lots of others just like it, featuring all the guests of the show. If you go back to the home page, scroll down, you can enter your email address and I'll send you occasional updates about my new videos and any events I'm participating in. If you're into social media, I have accounts on both Facebook and Instagram under the Trout and Feather heading. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com or you can leave them down below in the comments section. Once again, Kevin, thank you so much for everything and for all of you watching, I hope you enjoyed it. It was a great one. We'll see all of you next time.